All right, part six, uh, last video before we get into that polish stage. Um, okay, so where we left off is we did the water and sorted that out. Um, now I think, well, it's important to have a look at the entire painting and kind of say, what are the focal points? And that those are the areas where we're going to leave the most detail. Um, and some areas we roughed in really loosely, like this is still from the initial comp phase. We haven't added more detail. But before we kind of like start deciding what areas we want to really zero in on and add lots of little um, doodly detail, we kind of have to figure out what the focal points are. And if you look at this painting on first glance, where does your eye go? Right away. If you just close your eyes, open your eyes, where does it go right away? To me, it goes right here. And then from there, it quickly goes here because I like the water and I especially like the green. So for some reason, this like translucence of water, my eye just jumps here. Then it jumps here and then it kind of goes to the background. Um, so what I did is I kind of made a little bit of um, a diagram to kind of show you how I think about a painting. I'm going to turn off this layer. So if that's the photo, let me turn this off. These are kind of the four focal points, or that's kind of the order. So it starts here for me, then it goes here, then it goes here, then it goes here. And I think subconsciously the reason I picked this photo to begin with is because it had that rhythm, meaning it has kind of a circular rhythm. So it goes one, two, three, four, and that's kind of the way your eye travels around the picture. Now I also think, and I just thought of, I mean, I just thought about making this thing right now, but I also think that back in the day, you know, a couple of videos ago, you noticed I took away some of these bumps because I kind of subconsciously knew that this was not an important thing. And all these bumps stop your eye from coming back to the focal point. So if I'm going to say it's one, two, three, four, I would have lingered a little bit too long on four before I got back to one. And four is supposed to be like the least powerful. It's one, two, three, four, like that. Um, so you can't have one. One, two, three, four, it just doesn't work. They have to be successively, um, you know, less loud. I, I think three could be pretty loud. Like right here, I feel like uh, if I had done this painting, my instincts are to leave that dark area out of this painting. And I think the reason is because I think my eyes come in up to the front anyway. But if I leave this dark area here, I think it competes with this wave. So this dark area would kind of, for me, maybe... It's hard to decide what your first instinct would be, but I think it would have done this. It would have been like that. And then I wouldn't have a circle anymore. I'd have to go one, two, three, four, which you don't want that. You kind of want the eye to go around the picture. Start at one thing and then travel around the picture. Um, let's check in with uh, Shummy Shots. I mean, I think it, I think it kind of does that. I mean, definitely, like this comes back around. These guys go up here. These swirls of the cloud come back down and kind of your focal point you probably i mean your eye probably goes to these guys first and then over here and then up there and then down here um but yeah it's not a formal thing it's something i in this case i thought of after the fact but it's an important thing to consider um that you want to have one strong focal point and nothing competing with it and in my case i feel like yeah that little wave right there is uh is a problem so i'm gonna probably not not keep that in there all right so having said that Um, I think definitely because this area is a big part of the picture needs a little more love, um, this frothy wave here. So let's have a look at it. Look at it. Okay. So let's take our time here. See these little sparkly bits I'm just noticing for the first time? That translucence underneath the wave is really cool. I'm noticing there's like frothy foam that's kind of coming out. So yeah, there's these frothy, it's kind of like these bulbousy round shapes. You know, like from far away, the essence of the shape is that. Okay? But as you get closer, and again, the red is what's going on in my mind. As you get closer, I'm noticing... These are kind of round-ish shapes. And then there's like, it's just like a bunch of giant round shapes coming in. And then they're cut off at the bottom very straight. And then, of course, 
that goes up like that, and then the tenuous top of the wave, and then stuff comes around. But you see, this this stopping for a second to study the damn thing you're painting, just people don't do it. I don't even do it. I'm doing it now because I'm forcing myself to do it because I'm teaching you guys how to do it. But I forget to do it all the time, and it's just so critical. I didn't even know. Honestly, I've, been, I've painted probably 100 waves. I never really bothered to zoom in and look at this kind of bulbousy round spray up thing that I just saw when I stopped and did it with you guys. I've actually never noticed that before. So, yeah, stop and look. And I'm taking some Materian Lannister and just sculpting, sculpting some of these forms a little bit back to some McNulty, actually to some Cal Drogo. And notice, I don't care if it's a smooth, I think it's water. I think Cal Drogo is great for modeling forms with texture. It can be used for water, it can be used for rock. It's a pretty great brush. Um... And, I'm, and I have some reds in here and some light colors. Um, one thing that might be nice to try to figure out is I'm going to make a layer mask onto the underneath layer there and see if I can start with black. Because as you know, on a layer mask, you can only paint in black and white. And black erases and white brings back. It's a way of erasing and adding without messing up your picture. So I want some of those tick marks, right? Some of those little bits of, you know, the wave kind of curling around just so that I understand that it's a crashing wave. But I'm, I noticed, remember when I did that just a second ago, I did that thing like what is the essence of what that shape is? I noticed there's a couple of them going back, but I may not add all of them. Um, let me turn that down just a little bit. This one I like because I'm going to hold down shift, which I have set to a hot button and take that whole thing back. So that whole bit of wave there is. And what am I keeping in mind this whole time? This whole time I'm keeping this in mind. So what I'm what I'm using this for, why I made this little mask, is so I could say, there's my first read, there's my second read, third read, fourth read. So what that helps me to decide is how much detail am I gonna put in everything? You know, because I don't want to put a huge amount of detail everywhere. And concentrating your detail and deciding where your little amounts of your bits of detail is, like how he decided that this back was going to be that loose. If he had made this more photorealistic, it would have thrown off the whole painting. Because if you made this more real, then this would have to be more real than that. So this has to be the most rendered. This is the second most rendered. And the third most rendered. Fourth, and then fifth, sixth in the background. But what you, where you want your eye to go is where you want to concentrate your detail. So, um, you know, he's got a lot of detail up here. I don't know. You know what? That might be a problem with this image. I mean, God forbid we talk smack about Jamie Jones, but, you know, everybody's got a lot of different images. Like, for I, for one, always wonder why there's two guys here. I'm like, do we really need two guys? I kind of want one guy. And I want one guy to be doing something. You know, actually, I was messing around with this just because I was messing around, and I was like, you know what I kind of want? <laughs> oh, fucking electricity, you know what I mean? Because I felt like, I don't know. I was just messing around. I was like, I don't know. I kind of want that guy to do something. All right, even if he doesn't have electricity, just doing that maybe feels like he's summoning. You know, God forbid we talk crap about anyone. But that's the thing. Everybody, nobody's above critique. Right, Jamie? I hope you're watching this. Come punch me in the face. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's how we're deciding how much detail. That's something that never is ever really talked about is concentration of detail where to put it, why, when to leave stuff out, when to add stuff in. And I don't really have a solid understanding of it. I'm just telling you the systems I would use to the best of my knowledge based on looking at other people's stuff. Um, but I'm sure there are people who have it down to more of a science than I do. But that's the thing. It's not science. It's art. So you can have a theory, but it doesn't really always apply unless it applies. And then it applies. So let me erase that. I want to I want to like sully up that bottom edge a little bit. I think just generally, and again I'm painting black on the layer mask, so I don't have to worry about anything. Um, and now I love that strong mark that I originally had, so I'm very hesitant, very hesitant to get rid of anything that I put down initially that was strong.
But at the same time, to make this feel like a wave, I'm going to Freeman now. Freeman is a good edge softener, especially if you want to edge soften with some texture. But you know what? I'm actually not going to use Layer Mask. I'm going to straight up erase with Freeman. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want the Layer Mask to prevent me from painting back in. And I think I'm brave enough. I, I mean, I'm frightened, but I think I'm brave enough to erase out of there. Because maybe I want to. I want the opportunity to add a little bit of round topsies to these waves. And there are a lot of them, but I'm definitely not going to add all of them. Um... Where do, oh, see, I got some there. I don't want that. I'm going to go with white on the layer mask. And then, am I in white? White, layer mask, boom. Bring that back. No, I'm sorry, you're going away. And I straight erased out of that layer, but I can come back in. Getting a little sidetracked, but... That's kind of, you know, this is the part where it's okay to kind of bounce around. You know, everything is very methodical up until this point. Um, you know, maybe too methodical for some people. Which it is. It's a very methodical process. Um, and it's not for everybody. If you want to make work that looks like this, then do this. If you like somebody else's work, you should look at their work and then find out what they're doing. That's what I do. I only follow, do what people say if I like what their stuff looks like. Now, that's not to say you can't learn anything from people whose work you don't like. Otherwise, how would you learn art? I mean, most teachers are terrible. You know, I got a lot of feedback and stuff from people saying, man, I've been in art school for a while and I haven't learned shit. And the reason that is, is because your teachers are awful. <laughs> um, and that, you know, not all teachers are good. I'm not saying I'm the best, but I just teach you what I do. That's it. You know, I'm telling you what I do. So do whatever you want. I'm not dumbing it down. I'm not giving you different brushes. I'm not like, well, first you got to learn. You got to jump through these hoops. First you have to go through these trials of Indiana Jones. You got to do all these things to train yourself. This is not like a Rocky movie. You can just do what I'm telling you and then get better at it as you go if you want to have work that looks exactly like what I'm doing. But I'm learning new things every day, and I'm looking at other people, how they're working, and I'm trying to learn from them. So, um, yeah, you just keep working like that. And here's another thing, too. Teachers are terrible because... Of two reasons. One, they actually suck at art. You know, like they're just not very good. And that's why they teach. Because they got a teaching gig. And it's, it's hard to find good people who are good who also want to teach. I mean, because teaching is, ex is exhausting. Um, it takes a lot out of you. And you have to bring it every day. And, and, and you have to bring stuff that you think maybe people want to know. And it, it, puts, it calls your own knowledge into question. Because as you're teaching it, you're like, is this really the way I want to do this? Is this really the right way to do this? So that's one reason I'm bringing this. I'm going to start doing some of these little light bits again. And I'm only allowing myself to do some detail here because this is my focal point. Or I decided it was kind of an important focal point. Um, but yeah, the other reason is because they're assholes and they want to share their secrets. Um, and that's really, really common. I mean, I feel that. I, I don't want to tell everything. I don't want to like explain how I'm thinking. Um, but you got a lot of teachers that'll say, you know, this or that is a fundamental. What I'm teaching you is fundamental. Well, that's idiotic. That's like saying that uh, I am God. Therefore, some of the things I'm teaching you are beyond question because they're fundamentals. They're beyond technique. Well, nothing is beyond technique. Every, every time you put a uh, – you, you mark on the paper, it's technique. Now, does that mean there's no such thing as fundamentals? There are. But claiming that something is fundamental – is the same as saying, I know why the tsunamis happened, because God intended it. <laughs> That's just like saying, maybe he did, but you have no fucking idea. It's not your call. And it's the same with fundamentals. Like, it's irrelevant. Whatever's a fundamental or not a fundamental, who cares? It's just a way to canonize what you teach by saying, it's beyond scrutiny. That's what it is. Because it's not something that you can say, oh, it's this or that technique, it's fundamental. No, it's not. Everything's, everything's a technique. From the very first thing I did, I started doing my technique. It's how I work. It gets my results. You don't like it? Someone else's technique will be totally different. And so, and that's a huge problem, I think, in uh, in the teaching community, especially in art teaching, is because even if you have someone who's a master, you know, an absolute master, they're hesitant to share their shit. They'll tell you that it's fundamentals and that you got to go th jump through all these hoops, but secretly they're frightened 
They're frightened you're going to catch up with them. They're frightened you're going to get better. They're frightened you're going to take their job. Um, they're protecting their shit because it took them a long time to learn it. And if I show you some of the work that I did when I first started, you'd be like, that is horrible. I would not hire me. Some disgusting ass crap junk work. And now kids in school are, are better than I was seven years in my career. Seven years in, your average student at Art Center is better than me. Uh, definitely. There's kids now that kick my ass. And that's the thing. It's a competitive world. You want to be the best and you want to be good. So people don't want to share their secrets inherently. It's just inherent. Um, but if someone says that to you, it's not about the brushes. It's not about the technique. It's about the fundamentals. Well, yeah, maybe they're trying to help you a little bit if you're too caught up in techniques. But l let, let the motherfucker learn the technique too. Give him everything. I mean, because if you use a technique shittily, if you have a shitty technique, or you use the technique, let's say, well, but you have shitty structure and shitty fundamentals, you'll just look at it and be like, yeah, your fundamentals suck and your technique is good. So what? All right, we'll get better at the, get better at the fundamentals, quote unquote. You know, you have a, you, your drawing sucks, but your painting is good. Well, you'll just look at it and be like, well, that drawing sucks, <laughs> but the painting is good. All right, so get better at drawing. But there's no point in saying, decreeing it as one or the other. It's just a way of holding power over people and saying, I know, and you don't, and you will get there, but only after you've gone through the trials that I have. No, they'll get there a shitload faster if you tell them how. Tell them exactly how. They'll get there tomorrow, in a week. I've told people what to do the next... I've seen people in three months improve their portfolios a staggering amount. Go from, like, average to almost semi-professional, like I could hire them, just because they saw what other people did. They had the, they had the courage, the courage to say... I'm going to subjugate what I thought I knew to what this person is trying to teach me. Assuming you like their work and you trust their judgment. I mean, I still give my work to um, uh, people all the time to have looks at, like especially anything that's not under NDA, I'll give to my buddy Mache or, or people who, whose, whose art skills I trust and let them know what they think and they'll, you know, they'll crap on it and then I'll be like, fuck you, I'm not changing anything, you're an asshole. But uh, at least I learn. And then in the back of my head, I'm like, all right, he was kind of right about that. But I'm just not going to do it. Maybe on the next painting, I'll do it. Because nobody likes to be told to change anything, especially after you've already done it. But the people that have the ability to accept that change and just run with it, those are the people that get better way faster. Um, this wave is really this whole painting. It's so critical. And I don't really know how I feel about it, because I've been talking, and I can't talk and paint. Ranting and painting is not that easy. Mm. I'm trying to think. What's the simplest, classiest exaggeration of that shape that I can do? Oh yeah, I, you know, and with Freeman, I'm purposely using Freeman. Like I'm, you don't, you don't know this because I'm not telling you and I'm saying it out loud. But I'll, every time I pick a brush, I'm thinking about what is the edge of that brush, where is the edge that I want here, and I'm using Freeman. You see how I erase that with Freeman? But if I were going with Daniels, it would be super crisp. But I knew that it was water, so I knew that if I held down with Freeman, I would get a little bit of that, and because I know these brushes well. And that's something that I'm trying to tell you just because I'm realizing that I'm doing it subconsciously without, without mentioning it to you. But just be aware of that. Like every brush you pick out of these ones is a different tool in your arsenal. So make sure you're kind of aware. You know what's going on? I just need to look closer. There's like reflected white in the water and there's like these little slivers. And you know what I'm going to do? Because I feel like it looks artificially on the wave. I'm going to make another layer, put it underneath. Grab this. And just kind of. Yeah, because I feel like there's some of this that's happening that you're not able to see. You know, that's not like immediately noticeable. I'm going to make it like 60, 50%. I just hit number five on my keyboard um, to make it 50%. to stay far away you know what I'm noticing too there's a little bit of like purples and blues that are a little bit like a weird darkness that happens underneath there 
Um, I'm going to go in with Freeman and erase out of that. Let's see. Yeah, I think that, just that little bit, helps to sit that wave down on the ground a little bit. Um, um, I'm going to make a clipping mask on that thing. Um, no. There we go. Clipping mask. So I can mess around with some of those darks, because I feel like those are pretty, pretty necessary, and right now they're not really indicated at all. Just to get in there with a few of those really dark darks. Go back to 100%. You know what? I'm undoing that because I want to... It's not merging with the one below it, so I'm going to I'm gonna merge the two below it because the darks aren't painting over those white tick marks that I made. So now, now they will. Okay. Clicking on the side here so that when I undo, it doesn't go back in layers. There we go. And now I can get in there. I mean, those last little bits of just those last little accents of really dark. And there's some reds in there, I'm feeling. There's like a little bit of like. Not that much red. Yeah. I think that this whole wave. And then I'm going to need to put another layer underneath it because, yeah, that's what's happening here that I'm missing out on. I'm going to go 46% instead of hitting the number thing and just darken. There's some just, there's some reds. Here, there's some, there's some oranges. I know it's hard to see, but there's just like, I'm just sensing it. I'm just a tiny bit of it. And if I sense it a tiny bit, I'll throw it in there, because those last couple layers of shenanigans really do a lot. Get some of that blue in there. I had a leaf scatter brush, but I lost it a little bit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it again, because I'm just taking that, scattering it down, taking the scatter, bringing the scatter down, turning the count down spacing up a little bit, angle jitter, turn down the jitter, bring it in, make a new brush preset, say OK, throws it down here on the bottom. And I'm going to just look here for a second. Because this is my second focal point, <clears throat> I kind of, I, I can afford to do that. So you're deciding, oh, where do I put the texture? I would say it's got to be at a focal point. So you saw how I, it was kind of important that I, oh, you know what? I'm going to space it. I'm going to bring the scatter in to get those closer together a little bit. Um, actually, I'm going to sliver it down even more. Nope, too much. I'm trying to get it so that my couple strokes will really just get the job done. Angle jitter down to 1%. I think that's enough angle jitter. That's at 46%. I want it to be at 100. Paint strong. And notice I'm painting with, with strokes that go, that follow the direction of the wave. Now I'm painting in and I'm going to erase out, but right now I'm just painting in. And I changed the size of it a little more to get small and big ones. And I'm going to go with Freeman, lock that layer. Yeah, I feel like maybe they're just not so ubiquitous. They're a little bit only up in that top area. So I'm going to erase those ones out with Freeman on a layer mask painting in black, which is an erase. So that way, if I want to bring any of these bad boys back, I can. But what I'm basically doing is creating a texture that is kind of what I want. OK, that almost might be too much. But right now, I think it's fine. 
Now let's get back to this wave for a second because I don't know that I'm done with it. I kind of was talking too much while I was doing it, and I don't really think I have enough of that. I mean, just the right one, the right splatter, it just takes a few. Oh, man, no, that's covering the green. Get a couple little bits in there, and all of a sudden, you go from, like, cartoony to, like, oh, crap. That's kind of on the realistic side. I want to get in some of these. I'm trying to pick the color that I want, which is why I have all there all the time. Some of these top lighter bits that are coming out. Am I on the same layer? And here's I might go to some mixer brush tool. Notice it's in the brushes. It's down here to mixer brush. And I haven't used this very much yet or at all. But this is what Ned Stark is for. And what Mixer Brush does is it blends. You see that? I leave it at wet, whatever the default is there at 80%. But it does a nice job of blending. And I don't want everything to be all blendy. And I'm leaving this lock off so that I can have fun with the top of this wave a little bit. just to soften it up, but it's it's really cool. You'll notice, you see that? You see how like it adds a variety because you have all this gritty stuff and then you have this kind of soft blendy stuff? That one is might be a little bit too much right there. And now I can go back to a normal brush. I mean, you can use Ned Stark with a normal brush too. Um, it just goes like that. But I like him, I like using him mainly with mixer brush. Back to mixer brush here. A lot of people were asking too, like, how does this apply to concept? I'll do another uh, series on concepting for sure. But the difference with the concept is here we already know what the finished thing is going to look like, and all we're doing is the beauty styling. Whereas a concept, we have to get to the photo part. We have to get to this part where we know exactly what we're going to do, and then we apply it to it. Um, so that's a whole other can of worms. Um, but we'll definitely get to it because some of the techniques we use there are very surprising to a lot of people especially in terms of how much cheating goes on when you're a professional. People think everybody paints everything from scratch. Nay. Whenever you see stuff that your mind is blown, where you can't understand how the hell they did it, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't do it. They cheated their asses off. And that's another reason, too, teachers don't want to tell you stuff, or even pros, because they're like, I don't want anyone to know what a scummy piece of crap I am. But I don't care. I've already decided I'm a scummy piece of crap. Um, yeah, it needs that shadow there, and I'm just, I haven't been able to just really get it in there, And but, you know, I, I can draw it in with Tyrion, but then when it comes to the way I'm going to allow the edges of it to be in there, I'm looking at this and saying, well, yes, that one shape did it for me. Now, it's not the same as that shape that we have up there, but... Actually, I feel like maybe this whole thing is getting a little too ruckus on the top. I want to leave the ruckus only only at that beginning area and tone it down the rest of it to just keep it slightly more graphic. Yeah, I just felt like it was becoming a bit too much. And then this maybe needs to be a bit more. Yeah, see, here's a decision. Like, I'm not going to blend it with that back area. I'm going to separate those two so that you really feel that wave separate from the wave behind it. And all that green underneath, I think the strokiness there is totally acceptable and working. Um, there's sparkles I can see. There's, It's a lot more detailed. You know, there's all these worms in the bottom. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Let's see if I can do it, though. Let's. Okay, there's that layer. Let's make another layer. Um, mask on top of that and I'm gonna set it to like some oranges because I feel some oranges are happening and I'm gonna set it to overlay and I'm gonna turn it way down to like 12 percent no that's too down yeah 
Yeah. It's weird how there's a complementary color, like, right there. See, that's not a big difference, but look at that. That to that. It's weird how cool, how much, how much that adds. Just that little bit of warm, and the least, the least you'd expect it spot, but it is there. Um, yeah, I mean, you want to be careful not to kill it, and by killing it, I mean noodling on it till it loses its freshness. You want to keep trying to keep its freshness, and that, that's the fine line. I mean, that's that's what defines you as an artist. That's the thing that like, I'm not going to be able to teach you. You're just going to have to use your, your judgment because at every every turn, you're making decisions constantly. And all those decisions are your taste, so. That's a nice mark, but it was the wrong color. I'm going to just go a little bit lighter. This area is so important, so I'm just, I'm really taking my time. I want to feel the turn of that wave. I like these skadoodles on the top. What did I do on the underneath layer here, which I kind of liked, is, yeah, on that layer. I'm going to get back in there. I'm going to erase out a little bit of these because I'm noticing there are some more blues that are coming in. I'm, I'm going to grab my Ned Stark. Let's get in more blue. Get in there, buddy. Because he's already got a grain on him, you know what I mean? So that grain that's already inherent in the brush is the one I'm picking to get that, you know, that feeling. I'm not going in there and painting every one. I'm trying to find the right brush and painting with as few strokes as possible. Now I'm erasing out. Again, same same concepts as we did at the very beginning. Strong marks in, erase out. Same exact stuff from the very beginning. Looks like that wave starting to steal the show, no? I feel like that wave now becomes, the, you know, the focal point, especially where the color comes back down and around. Um, oh, well, I guess that's what's happening. Um, I kind of want that green to come back up a little bit more, though. Where is that bad boy? Are we here? Yes. See, easy to find. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to grab a little bit of that color. I just don't know about this couple different directions that's going on there. Yeah. No. Okay. Ooh, okay. All right. Okay, so now I think that there's another layer that is going to be all the little white speckly bits. And that's where we can take this, this leaf brush, turn the count down, the scatters all the way up, and then you get the spacing really high. And I'm going to just kind of do that. That will go a long, long way towards making this thing feel photoreal, um, but not be. I'm going to turn down the color on that a little bit. Because I think right here, well, let's just have a close look. There is some spattly, speckly things. Yeah. They're just not as bright, so I'm just going to turn them down a little bit. Um, and notice, as always, I'm painting them in very strong. Even back, oh, yes, I forgot about back there. What's going on back there? Well, there's all kinds of speckly things back there. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring the spacing in a little bit so I can get in there and do some of that. It's subtle, but... I'm making sure to make the brush size smaller, because speckles back here aren't going to be the same as speckles up front, obviously. And you notice I'm still working far away, because I'm not concerned with every speckle. I'm just concerned with some key speckles. And then I'm going to go in with some, uh, get back into some white here. Get into some of these things. As long as they don't take away from the picture. Yeah, there's this little bit of water that's coming in off the side and you know Cal Drogo is like a good bunch of speckles if you ever want a bunch of speckles I'm not even bothering with multiple layers now I'm just kind of like painting what I what I see there going in with some Tyrion see I'm changing three brushes to to express that little bit right there 
but I want to get careful not to get too carried away because, again, my focal point is not back here. My focal point is those four areas that we looked at earlier. So that's that's an important thing to keep checking in with so that when you start getting carried away with stuff and being like, all right, well, there's some stuff here and some stuff here, just make sure it's not drawing the eye away from what's important. Mm -hmm. Starting to get into some of these things. You know, that's dangerous because that's I want that on the same layer. Okay, so I'm putting a layer mask on that bad boy. And now... I'm looking and seeing, all right, well, there aren't speckles everywhere. There's some here. There's really very few here. They're all, like, up there. Yeah, these are, like, here. They're not on the shadow side at all. They're not in the shadows at all. So anywhere they're in the shadows, I'm going to take them out. That's kind of an important little subtlety, is that they're only on the light bits. Yeah, so I keep um, adding little bits here and there. Um, just being really careful that none of these little white pieces pull my eye away from what, uh, what the focal points are. And that as they go back, they get smaller. And as they stay forward, they are appropriately the right bling. And this is that finish polish stuff that's kind of nice. I mean, you'll decide for yourself what's enough in that department when you've had enough little bits and when you're like, all right, well, that's enough. And I always check it from far away to see how bright it is. If it's much brighter than what's there, then you've gotten carried away. Now, this is my third read, so I'm, gonna, I'm starting to do some detail here. And I'm going to do it on the speckle layer, actually. But... I'm just going to focus on making a couple strong strokes because I'm actually very scared of getting too carried away because I want to make sure that it stays relatively simple and doesn't take away from the rest of the painting. And any, definitely that dark shape is not coming in there. That's not going to make an appearance, almost for sure. Now I'm just straight painting. Um, not worrying about layers, not worrying about all the shenanigans. I'm just seeing what's there, and I'm doing it on an overpaint layer because I'm done. You know, I, I'm at a certain point. I'm not going to be always for the entire painting bothered with going in and trying to find the layer. There's a certain point where you say, "All right, well that's enough. I can I can trust that I can do a little bit of overpainting." That little bit of dark accent I can live with. Because that brings your eye over here without making it say, hey, come look at this part of the picture. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, as I'm looking at this, I'm actually realizing that this wave sucks. All right, and I'm going to try a few things. Uh, I think the main, my main problem with it, it's just looking too fussy. I'm not feeling the energy of this wave because I'm really just, I, I've got too caught up making it too real. And I think mainly it's because I was ranting while I was doing it. And I just want, I want this shape to be just like much more powerful. Um, so I'm going to just, and I don't think it's going to take too much. I think just that, well, I also want it to feel real, but let's go with Freeman. Get some of that edge in there. You see how many times I'm undoing? Undo is on a hotkey, like right there. All right, and I'm erasing right on it because I don't want to mess with the layer mask because I don't know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna take away and what I'm gonna add. Um, I'm gonna put and make another layer for the for the splash that I'm thinking of because I want to add some do some splashy doodles on the top here, but I don't want them to affect the rest of it. So that way I can come back in and. And I'm getting in there, just modeling that shadow, just so that I understand that that wave actually has form and shape. 
Yeah, way better. Let's have a look. I mean, it's not that dramatic, but I'm going to put this on a grouped. So there was that was what we had before. And that's what I changed it to. Now, it's not a huge deal, but to me, it like goes a, it goes a long way to capturing the energy of that wave. And I think with that, uh, we'll wrap up. Uh, we got one more. I thought we'd finish in this one, but uh, we didn't. And on the next one, we're just going to talk about polish. Now, there's a lot of little techniques. There's a lot of little tricks to uh, getting the polish to that last level, adjusting fog, adjusting gradients, adjusting tiny little pieces, adding grain, a sharpen layer. Um, so we'll get into all those details in the uh, next and last video. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be posting um, all the updates if we're not Facebook friends. Um, Twitter is actually a more reliable way to, uh, to get updates on everything. So find me, Shadi Safadi, on Twitter and, uh, and follow me there so you know exactly when videos are coming out every week. And, uh, and I'll give you updates on what we're doing next. All right. Thanks a lot.